understand something more about blood. The other constituent of blood that we need to consider is the various types of blood corpuscles. In fact, corpuscles are cells which cannot give rise to a tissue. See, as such, blood itself is a fluid connective tissue. But then it includes everything right from plasma till corpuscles. But corpuscles are the cells which cannot join together, which cannot come together and give rise to a tissue like epithelium or muscle. And they keep flowing through a suitable fluid medium, which in this case would be the plasma or let's say the blood. There are three types of corpuscles in human blood. They are red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Let's know about red blood cells, RBCs, which are also called as erythrocytes. That's because erythro stands for red and site means a cell. So these are red cells contained in the blood or red blood corpuscles. Now when you have a look at the blood as a whole, you see it to be a thick red colored fluid that's predominantly because of the red blood cells contained in it a huge number of these cells are contained in blood so what you see there it's nothing but the red blood cells otherwise as we have seen in the earlier session plasma the carrying medium is transparent yellowish but you don't see that transparent yellowish color you what you see is color of the red blood cells only one cubic millimeter of blood that is a cube you can consider one millimeter by one millimeter by one millimeter so one cubic millimeter of blood contains about four to seven millions of these cells that is 40 to 70 lakhs of red blood cells are contained in just one cubic millimeter of blood and that's why the blood as a whole appears to be red in color now these cells, structurally if you try to understand, it's more or less an oval cell with a concavity right in the center. These cells are enucleated, there is no nucleus, enucleated cells. Of course I would say the mature red blood cells are enucleated because in the developmental stages up to a particular phase, the cells do contain nuclei, after which the nucleus is lost and it becomes a mature red blood cell. So this is a mature red blood cell with a concavity right in the center. So it can be described as a biconcave cell. Biconcave cell. That is, there is a concavity on either side. So if you cut it into two halves, This is what it would look like. Almost a dumbbell like appearance in this section of view. The size measurements, the diameter is about 4 to 7 microns. 4 to 7 microns. And this thickness, here it will be around 1 micron, here it will be around 2 to 2.5 microns. That is what a typical red blood cell would appear to be. In addition to absence of nuclei, it's essential to note that the cells also do not contain other cell organelles like mitochondria. So what it contains is predominantly cytoplasm. Now here, the size, the shape which you are seeing is set to be almost fixed, permanent shape. Why do I say almost? Because, see, 4 to 7 microns is its size and when it is trying to flow through a capillary, the diameter of capillary is adequate just for one RBC to pass through it at a time. So if more than one RBC is trying to push through, then some squeezing could be required, only that flexibility the cell has, otherwise its shape is not changeable, a fixed shape it has got. Almost this much area around the uh, 
concavity would be identified as the stroma it will be identified as the stroma and it is this region which would contain hemoglobin the red colored respiratory pigment hemoglobin actually it's made of a heme core that's a porphyrin molecule to which four globin molecules are bonded so four globins and one heme together that will be hemoglobin this heme core it's mainly made up of iron it's mainly made up of iron so heme and globin together they will form a hemoglobin which is contained mostly in this region that is marked as the stroma now that's presence of hemoglobin or presence of this respiratory pigment renders it a prime function of conduction of oxygen from the respiratory organ to the various tissues of various cells another important factor that we need to take into consideration here the plasma membrane the cell membrane of red blood cell may have A rhesus protein over it. If rhesus protein is contained on it, you call that as Rh positive kind of blood. That's a blood grouping system that we are talking about. And if this rhesus protein is absent, you call that as Rh negative kind of blood. In fact, the presence of hemoglobin in this stroma region makes the cell red in color because in the periphery there could be transparent cytoplasm but then as could be seen here major part of the cell is occupied by the stroma that is hemoglobin which gives it red color each red blood cell is stays functional for about 120 days almost four months after which it would be destroyed, it would be broken down either in liver or spleen. And when it's broken down, the hemoglobin from it will be taken out, heme would be separated and would be stored mostly in the liver cells and globin would be converted into bile pigment and would be suitably excreted. So heme and globin would be separated, heme would be stored and globin would be excreted as bile pigment. This process of destruction of red blood cells after the completion of 120 days of its life, it's called as hemolysis. Heme here stands for blood and lysis stands for destruction. Destruction of blood cells or destruction of red blood cells in particular with the reference to all what we're talking about. Now the heme which is stored in the liver cells can be made available for preparation of fresh hemoglobin that is when new blood cells are being synthesized the hemoglobin required is produced by using the same hemoglobin molecules can be synthesized can be secreted so hemolysis and hemopoiesis or in this particular case you can call it as erythropoiesis takes place in liver and in bone marrow. In bone marrow, there is a, a bone marrow stem cell which goes through a series of developmental phases and finally gives rise to the mature erythrocyte, enucleated erythrocyte. That process, as I said, is called as erythropoiesis. So after every four months, after every 120 days span, the red blood cells are replaced with the fresh ones. Now because of the hemoglobin that's contained here, its important function, the prime function would be to conduct oxygen. Four atoms of oxygen can be carried by one molecule of hemoglobin. At the same time, hemoglobin can also react with carbon dioxide to form carbonohemoglobin 
which also could be carried from the tissues to the lungs from where it could be suitably excreted. So conduction of oxygen, conduction of carbon dioxide are prime two functions. But when I say conduction of carbon dioxide in form of carbaminohemoglobin, this would mean conduction of just about 5 to 10 percent of the entire CO2. Rest of the CO2 would be carried through plasma. And when I say plasma, it is carried in form of a bicarbonate that certainly has an impact on the pH of the plasma or pH of the blood as whole. Well. So in that case, by deciding the amount of CO2 to be carried through red blood cell, it has an indirect role in maintaining pH of the blood, pH of the plasma, pH of the conducting fluid. Then this also defines the blood group rhesus positive or rhesus negative. And the red color of blood, it's because of the red blood cells. Of course, that cannot be called as a function, but that is a, just a statement. Red blood cells make the blood appear red in color. Red blood cells have a tendency to adhere to one another stick to one another and form stacks, clusters. This cluster is called as a rolu. Note the spelling, it's very unique. A rolu wherein these cells form clusters or stacks. A large number of them come together, stick to one another and form a rolu. Of course, this doesn't happen when the blood is flowing through the vessels. In the next session, we will learn about the white blood corpuscles or the leukocytes.